Good afternoon, friends. Traditionally, let's talk about the fakes of the aggressor country. Well, there was a round of talks in Istanbul, after which Russia said that the main tasks of the first stage of the special operation, that's how they call the war against Ukraine. So, it is as if these talks have been completed. Of course, let's remember how before the war and after it started, they boasted about their intention to take Kyiv in three or four days, overthrow the Kyiv government and create on the territory of Ukraine either three quasi states or completely destroy Ukraine as a state. All this we have discussed with you here on the press point. Now it is limited to the fact that it turns out that the first stage has been achieved. And what does it consist of? Let's talk in the language of statistics. More than 17,200 killed Russian troops. If this was the purpose of the first stage of the special operation, one can only be congratulated on such an achievement. 597 Russian tanks destroyed. It's almost 600. Congratulations as well. 127 aircrafts destroyed. Congratulations. 129 helicopters. 1700 armored vehicles, etc., etc. If this was the purpose of the special operation, then of course you can imagine what the second and third phases will be like. If indeed they are now trying to save face after such an actual defeat on the battlefields of Ukraine, then let them find another wording, but definitely not the first stage of the successful special operation. Let's move on. What fakes have they been using in recent days? Well, first of all, the member of parliament of the previous ninth convocation, who was removed of the powers, Ilya Kiva, who came out on air of Russian propagandists with his traditional stuffing, showed up again. So Ilya Kiva said that, as a Ukrainian, as a father of three children, as a man who cannot live in this madhouse, due to what Ukraine was turned into, the West conducted probably one of the most horrible special operations, and so on and so forth. What made me interested in this statement by Ilya Kiva was the phrase about the madhouse. At one time Ilya Kiva showed a certificate precisely from a mental hospital that he could not be put in jail and punished accordingly with a prison sentence. This allowed him to reconsider the court verdict for corruption, which he got, and then to make a career in the internal affairs bodies and then to become a member of parliament. That is why he probably knows a little bit more than all of us about the madhouse that he is talking about. Another fake is about the Uker post becoming a part of the Russian post. In this regard, the general director of Uker Poshta, Ihar Smelansky, said that they were slightly mistaken. In fact, he said that not Uker Poshta will become a part of the Russian post, but according to the plan of reparations after the war, the Russian post will probably become part of our Ukrainian Ukrposhta. Of course, we will have to do a lot to get them to our level, but we are used to the work, so please don't read Soviet newspapers and Russian fakes, Ihor Smelansky noted. And the traditional horror stories about Ukrainian warriors, nationalists and banderities are told by the Ministry of Defense and their propaganda mouthpieces. Bodies of people with signs of torture and swastikas carved on them were found in Mariupol. It is not some crazy person, some fantasist or even an anonymous telegram channel, but the Russian Ministry of Defense. And this statement is posted by a Russian state resource, though a propaganda one, Russia Today. It seems that in the 21st century such fakes already look inadequate. It is impossible to believe this unless we have at least presented with falsified evidence, but they are just throwing it into the media space, counting on the public to believe whatever nonsense their propaganda machine produces. Well, parallel to the swastika scarfed on corpses, on the other hand, in liberated, in inverted commas, Melitopol, as the propagandists say, people started coming out into the streets, they are no longer afraid that Ukrainian security forces or nationalists will come to their homes if they say something that, that Ukrainian authorities don't like. It seems that democracy in Ukraine could be envied not only by Russia or another neighboring country, but also by some of our western neighbors. Of course, this is a lie. Never in Ukraine have authorities shut anybody's 
mouths and force those who are not happy with the government to sit at home. Moreover, in the Ukrainian parliament the number of opposition parties was a little less than half, while in the Russian state Duma there is no opposition at all, and they poisoned and killed their oppositionists, directly shooting them in front of the Kremlin. Therefore, do not believe the Russian propaganda, do not believe the liars who work on Russian state resources and trust the Ukrainian official media, the Ukrainian armed forces and the Ukrainian political leadership. Everything will be fine. Glory to Ukraine!